must know what he's talking about. I don't understand a word he's saying. Hey, Rich House, I'd like you to meet the real mayor of this town, the Honorable Osgood Bob Flopdinger. This is the other guy. Uh, listen, Rich House, I understand that you're new to Shining Time Station. You're new to Shining Time Station, and you don't know anything about this town. Well, I know a heck of a lot more than him. Hey, 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 that's my candidate you're nah, talking about. Oh, 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 he's joking me! Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't! Shall we settle this the usual way, a debate? Uh, we'll let the kids run it, they can ask the questions. Uh, we'll broadcast it live on TV. Meet the kids. Meet the kids! What a wonderful idea! Huh? Yes, yes, yes. We'll let the kids ask the questions. That'll be easy. <laughs> uh, okay, you got a deal. See you at the debate. Yeah. <laughs> about our playground. Then I can ask him why the library isn't open longer. Mr. Conductor, need some help? No, thanks, Kara. This is what you get when you lose control of your own hot air. You get all puffed up like some of these politicians around here. You guys think the mayor's gonna lose the election? I know he'll lose with Schemer helping him. What do you think, Mr. Conductor? I think this reminds me of a saying we have on the island of Sodor. We say every engine has to pull its own freight train. Why do you always say that? Because it's true. Look what happened to James. He learned about it the hard way. James had not been out to push coaches or freight cars in the yard for several days. He was feeling miserable. Oh, dear. I wonder how long I shall have to stay in the shed. Will anyone ever see my red coat again? Why did I go so fast that I made a hole in one of my coaches that had to be mended with, of all things, a passenger's boot lace? At last, Sir Topham had arrived. I know you are sorry, James, and I know, too, that you want to be a useful engine. People are laughing at my railway, and I do not like that at all. I will try hard to do my best, said James. That's a good engine. There's nothing like determination. I want you to pull some freight cars for me. James was delighted and puffed away. Here's your freight train, James, said Thomas. Have you got some bootlaces ready? And he ran off laughing. said the freight cars. We want a proper engine, not a red monster. James took no notice and started as soon as the conductor was ready. Come along, come along, he puffed. We won't, we won't, screamed the freight cars. But James didn't care, and he pulled the screeching cars sternly out of the station. tried hard to make him give up, but he still kept on. Sometimes their brakes would slip on, and sometimes their axles would run hot. And each time, the trouble had to be put right. And each time, James would start again, determined not to let them beat him. Give up, give up. You can't pull us. You can't, you can't, called the cars. I can and I will. I can and I will, puffed James. And slowly but surely, he pulled them along the line. At last, they saw Gordon's Hill. Look out for trouble, James, warned his driver. We'll go fast and get them up before they know it. Don't let them stop you. So James went faster. Soon they were halfway up. I'm doing it. I'm doing it, he panted. Will the top never come? Then, with a sudden jerk, it all came easier. I've done it! I've done it! Hooray! It's easy now! But his driver shut off steam. They've done it again! We've left our tail behind! Look! The last cars were running backwards down the hill. The coupling had snapped. But the conductor stopped the cars and got out to warn approaching engines. That's why it was easy, said James, as he backed the other cars carefully down. What silly things freight cars are! There might have been an accident. Should I help you, James? called Edward. 
No, thank you. I'll pull them myself. Good. Don't let them beat you. You're doing well, whistled Edward, as James slowly struggled up the hill. I can do it! I can do it! He puffed. He pulled and puffed as hard as he could. I've done it! I've done it! He panted. James was resting in the yard when Edward pulled up. Beep, beep, he whistled. Then James saw Sir Topham Hatt. Oh, dear, what will he say, he asked himself. But Sir Topham Hatt was smiling. I was in Edward's train, and I saw everything. You've made the most troublesome train on the line behave. After that performance, you deserve to keep your red coat. I like that story, Mr. Conductor. James beat the freight cars. He didn't give up. And neither should the mayor if he wants to win this election. But he'll never win unless he learns to pull his own freight train. Oh, I get it. You mean the mayor has to learn to run on his own without schemer telling him what to do all the time. He has to take more responsibility for himself, or else no one should vote for him. Isn't that what I just said? Welcome to a broadcast first. Meet the kids. Today's topic, the race for mayor. Good evening, and welcome to the Shining Time Station Debate. I'm your host, Ted Typo, ace reporter for the Indian Valley Gazette, and we'll start the questioning with Kara. Mr. Richhouse, how will you fix up the playground in the park? By making the hard choices and the tough decisions. How about you, Mayor Flopdinger? Huh? Oh, I... Oh. We'll build a whole new playground. Kids who want to play in it will pay Schemer a small admission fee. Oh, no. oh. Next question from Becky. Mr. Mayor, what advice would you give to kids about life? Uh, oh, uh, 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 send your nickels to Schemer, and he'll give you all the advice you need. Oh, <laughs> yes! Yes! Uh, he's telling me to say that. He's telling me to yes! say that. Yes! Yes! I quiet. I quiet. Quit. Quit, 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 quit. You quit? You can't quit, Skeever! You're fired! Yeah! Friends, I want to apologize. We're going to buy all new equipment for the playground. Yes, yeah. Now, I know I've been slow to start recycling. But if you re-elect me, I'll get right on it. But now listen, my biggest mistake was hiring that schemer. Me, who's always saying things like, every engine has to pull its own freight cars. Yes, <laughs> yeah, well, I know sometimes I seem distracted, but I really do respect all of you. And there, thank you very much. There is nobody. And what's the point? One vote won't make any difference. Well, whoever wins will be your mayor, whether you vote or not. You... 
may have a point there. But I still say, it won't make any difference. Stacy, Stacy, he won! He won, Osgood! He won by one vote, which was undoubtedly mine. <laughs> hey, everybody, hey, everybody! Did you hear the news? Did you hear the news? We already know. The mayor has been reelected, which I guess goes to show you that Schemer's system of success was a success after all. <laughs> well, I mean, in, in the beginning. Oh, a little bit. Oh, kids! Kids! <laughs> Miss Jones? Miss Smoot? Yes, I'll even schemer. It was close, but we did it! We did it! <laughs> no, by we, I mean I. Listen, I want to thank all of you. Well, most of you. Listen, and I promise to keep all of my promises. Oh, that's another promise. Oh, there's another one. That, that oh, dear, oh, dear. Looks like you kids were right. Not only did my vote make a difference, but everybody's did. I'm ready. You gave it a good try, Mr. Richhouse. Are you going on vacation? No, just moving, Miss Jones. But you just got here. Some people might say, Rich House, you just got here. And they'll call me a quitter. Well, I'm not a quitter. I'm just moving on to a new town, to a new election. But you just lost the election. Why do you want to run in another one? Kids, I want to make this crystal clear. I've made some mistakes in the past. But if I ever win another election, I promise you, my only job will be to help all the people. And any politician who gets elected, who doesn't try to help all the people, doesn't deserve to win. Now, you remember that when you're old enough to vote. Oh, there's my train. Don't worry. One day, when you think I'm gone forever, I'll be back. <laughs> Goodbye. Good luck. Have a good trip. Woo! Well, everybody voted this time, Mr. Conductor. It's exciting, isn't it? Maybe I'll run for mayor next time. Oh, that would be great. And you could give speeches to big crowds and do a debate on TV. <laughs> and then if you win, you'd have a huge office where people come in and see you every day. And you'll never, ever be left alone. Hey, you know something? I think I'll run for mayor someday. <laughs> On second thought, maybe I'll just go fishing. <laughs>